As you know, I had made a video on chess opening tricks that exist in the tennis in Gambit. That video got more than 2 million views on YouTube. That was a short video so I was not able to cover all the different lines and variations. I was recently going through all the comments and realized there were a lot of common questions. So in this video, I will go through the Tennyson Gambit in detail and along the way, I will try to answer all your questions. Plus, I will also show you all the different opening moves, tricks, ideas and strategies that you can use to win more games. So stay tuned till the end and keep watching Chess Talk. Hello chess friends, I am Jitendra Advani. If this is your first time on this channel and you want to learn some cool chess tricks and become a better chess player, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss any of my videos. Before we begin, I would strongly recommend that you try these opening tricks only on players rated below 1800. Plus, there are high chances that your opponent will fall for these traps when he does not have much time to think. So you should play these tricks mostly in quick games like the blitz and the bullets. Okay, so let's start with the king's pawn opening, pawn to e4. Black responds with the Scandinavian defense, pawn to d5. Now as white, you will play this surprising move, knight to f3. Now here, there were a lot of comments from our viewers that this opening does not happen. Our opponent generally plays pawn to e5 and very rarely someone plays pawn to d5. Well, let me show you another way in which you can get to this position. Let's start with the move, knight f3. This invites black to play the move, pawn to d5, which enables you to play e4 and set up the gambit. From here, the most natural move from black would be to capture this pawn. And then, as you know, we will play knight g5 attacking this pawn. Now, if black tries to hang on to this pawn, then he has many options. He can play bishop to f5, or queen to d5, or even pawn to e5. I will show you tricks in all these lines, but first, let's see the most common and sensible reply from black, that is knight to f6. To this, we will play pawn to d3. Black wants to get rid of this awkwardly placed pawn, so he captures and then we recapture with our bishop. In this position, I had shown you that black plays pawn to h6. There were some comments saying that this is a very bad move and this won't happen in real games. Well, I can guarantee you that you will see this in every second game. I will tell you why. Look, when I talk about less rated players, they get very uncomfortable seeing their opponent's pieces getting close to them especially if it's a knight targeting their king's side. So they try to kick off this knight immediately and hence they play the move pawn to h6. Anyone who hasn't seen this trap before has very high chances of falling for it. So from here we will play knight to f7, forking the queen and rook. The king is forced to capture, then we will play bishop to g6, check and the queen is gone. So that was the first variation which I had also shown in my earlier video. Now let me just go back and show you what happens if black plays bishop to f5. From here you can attack this pawn with your other knight. Again he tries to defend this pawn so he plays knight to f6. You will now attack the pawn for the third time by playing queen to e2. This will force black to play queen to d4 to support the pawn. If he plays this then he's gone. Let me show you how. First you will play queen b5 check attacking the king, the bishop and this pawn on b7. Black's response is pretty much forced. He will have to play bishop to d7. Now you can capture this b7 pawn. From here, I can guarantee you most of your opponents will play bishop to c6, assuming they are not only saving the rook but also attacking the queen. But to their surprise, you will play this beautiful move bishop to b5. Again, black is now forced to play queen to d7. The thinking behind this is to trade off queens and minimize the damage somehow. But your opponent will be shocked to see your next move, that is, bishop takes bishop. The most obvious response would be queen takes bishop, which looks to be quite a good move. But if you look at it carefully, you have a stunning move. Can you spot it? Yes, it is queen to c8. That's checkmate and it's game over. Now let me just go back and show you the third variation. What happens if black plays queen to d5? He is not only protecting the pawn, but also attacking this knight. You should now play pawn to d3, protecting the knight with your bishop. Now if your opponent plays knight f6 or bishop f5, then you can simply play knight c3 attacking the queen and after the queen moves, you can easily regain the pawn and as you see, you are also ahead in development. So let's go back again. So that's why if black wants to retain any advantage, then he has to capture this pawn. 
Now once again we are going to capture with the bishop. Which looks very odd because you are giving away your g2 pawn. So the most natural move from black would be taking the pawn on g2. Your opponent won't realize but he's actually falling for another trap. Because after this you will play bishop to e4. The queen is trapped and has nowhere to go. The only safe square left is g4. But after queen captures queen and bishop captures queen, you can play bishop to g7 and the black rook is gone. Okay, so now let's go back and see another move to support the pawn and that is pawn to f5. I would say this is the worst possible move and you can take advantage of it by simply playing bishop to c4 and attacking the weakest square of f7. Here black is left with no options so he will have to play knight h6 to support this square. After this I would play pawn to d3. If black wants to keep the material advantage then he will have to capture the pawn. I would not be too concerned about this pawn so I will simply castle and get my rook involved. If black captures again you can take with your queen. What you are looking to do is to clear up the board and get more of your pieces involved in the game. You have your queen attacking this pawn, you have your bishop and knight eyeing down the f7 square, you can get your rook to attack along these open lines. Whereas if you see black's position all his pieces are blocked and doing absolutely nothing. So all in all you have a lot of attacking options and it's a very good position for white. Let me know in the comments if you have been successful in playing the tennis and gambit. Hit the thumbs up if you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more such chess videos. For some interesting chess tips, tricks and puzzles you can like my Facebook page. Links are in the description box below. Thanks for watching and I shall see you in my next video.